Hello guys and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at this, which is called the DMA F5 produced by Menace Forum. It's an ultra compact computer costing 558 Australian dollars. The question is, is it worth the money? It may be small, but is it worth sacrificing some performance to get it into this really small size? Let's find out. A big thank you to Menace Forum for sending this pre-production unit over. They've been given no copy approval and you're seeing this review at the exact same time they are. Now let's dig into the box. On the back all of the specifications are listed. This particular model ships with a Ryzen 5 3550H quad core CPU which has Vega 8 graphics integrated into a single chip. Inside is some documentation and the mini computer itself. This box is also jam packed with goodies such as a vase mount, HDMI and DisplayPort cables. They're also including a tiny wireless keyboard that doubles as a mouse. This compact little machine measures 5 by 5 inches and is 1.9 inches tall. Here's a banana for scale. Even though it's small it packs dual gigabit ethernet, 4 USB type A 3.1 ports, HDMI 2.0, DisplayPort, USB-C Gen 2, microphone and a 3.5mm audio jack. But what's it like inside? And is it easy to upgrade? All you have to do is push down on the top lid and you've got access to all of the upgradable components. In the M2 slot we're given a full length 2280 solid state drive with a heatsink. Something I've never really come across before. After removing the heatsink we can see it's a 256GB Kingston drive. The SSD in the pre-production version I received is a SATA SSD. However, the final version is apparently going to come with an NVMe PCIe Express SSD. But honestly, even the SATA SSD that came in the pre-production unit was pretty fast and had really good read and write speeds. Keeping the processor in such a small computer cool is quite important. As we can see, there are some big air intake vents on the base. The hot air is then exhausted out the back here. Now let's see exactly what is cooling the quad-core 8-thread 3550H. After removing four Phillips head screws, the base comes off to reveal a decent sized single fan. And holding that fan in place are four screws on the other side of the motherboard. And now we've got our first look at the Ryzen 5. This particular CPU has a base clock of 2.1GHz and a boost clock of 37 It supports DDR4 at 2400MHz and has a default TDP of 35 watts. Using some isopropyl alcohol, I cleaned the original thermal paste off and will be applying some Arctic MX4. Even while running a CPU intensive benchmark, Cinebench R20, it maintained a clock speed of approximately 3.4 GHz on all cores and did not exceed 80 degrees Celsius. It scored 1692, which is pretty decent for a cost effective mobile processor. Piecing it back together was really easy. Putting in two sticks of DDR4 is a must if you want to play games and you can put in any PCIe NVMe drive that you want. On the underside of the lid there's also room for a 2.5 inch SATA drive. It's great to see that every upgradable component is easily accessible under this little door. Overall I'm very impressed with the build quality and cooling in this little computer. Now let's set it up using the included vase mount. Most monitors and televisions will have a vase mount on the back, allowing you to attach, in this case, a very small computer. It instructs you to mount the computer like this, but wouldn't you want to exhaust the hot air upwards instead of downwards? Either way, if you do some good cable management, no one would even realise there's a computer attached to the back of the screen. Through all the benchmarks and testing I've done, the graphical performance was about 35% better when I used two sticks of memory in dual channel. It's honestly baffling to me why they would ship this with a single 8GB stick. It truly does cripple the Vega graphics in this unit. Here are those tests. Unigen Heaven is a popular graphical benchmarking tool. The results using a single stick of RAM versus two sticks in dual channel are quite pronounced. 691 versus a score of 1050, about a 35% difference. In the 3D Mark benchmarking test called Firestrike, the scores were 1711 versus 2708, a 37% difference. I tried out a few games on here, and if you're willing to crank down the graphics settings to low, you can play some games at 1080p. That being said, the base configuration comes with a single 8GB stick of RAM, as I've said, which totally cripples the Vega 8 APU. So if you do get this, I would strongly recommend you buy a higher tier model or put two sticks of RAM in yourself. 
So let's see just how well the Minus Forum GMA F5 can play my favourite games. BeamNG Drive at the absolute lowest quality settings at a resolution of 1080p is very playable. On the Utah map I was getting frame rates between 45 and 60. Although if I put the settings to normal at 1080p, it looks a whole lot better but the frame rate is lower as a result. 30 frames per second is playable, but it does look a lot more choppy. PUBG is a pretty demanding game. I fiddled around with the settings quite a bit. Even at the lowest quality settings, the frame rate was still quite poor at 1920x1080. In a game that requires quick reaction times for you to be competitive, I settled at a resolution of 1600x900, which was a good balance between frame rate and resolution. Bumping the resolution down to 1280x720, the lowest it will go, gets you close to a constant 60 frames per second. The problem is playing at such a low resolution makes seeing anything in the distance quite challenging. On the flip side, the high resolution of 1920x1080 feels quite sluggish because of the frame rate. Not ideal for a shooting game. However, 1600x900 gets you about 40 to 45 frames per second, which feels much more fluid and also has enough resolution for you to see players and objects in the distance. Using Grand Theft Auto's benchmarking tool, we're getting decent frame rates. That's running on normal settings at 1080p. Last of all, I tried some 4K 60 frames per second high bitrate video. This Sony Food Sizzle demo worked great, and this computer would make for a decent home theater PC if you so desired. What makes this a difficult device to recommend is the fact that the estimated shipping in the Indiegogo campaign is October of 2020, but Minus Forum themselves have announced that they're going to be releasing Ryzen 4000 series chips in September in these machines. So by the time you've got the product you bought on the Indiegogo campaign, it's already going to be superseded by a much better device, making this kind of hard to recommend. Compared to what Intel and ASUS are offering in the mini computer world, this is priced pretty competitively. But when it comes to warranty and long-term support, Minus Forum are largely unproven. And considering they plan on releasing Ryzen 4000 series versions in September, I would honestly wait till then because that sounds like a much better deal. The fact it has Windows 10, includes RAM, and an SSD is definitely something that it has above the bare bones kits you can buy from those previously mentioned brands, but for the price, I would honestly wait for the Ryzen 4000 series. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this little video. I've got some cool old tech videos coming up in the near future. So thank you very much for watching. I'll see you then.